my coronavirus log for week 29. Details in description below, and here's the general outline. So I'm here at my buddy TJ's house, going to record store day, just giving his dog some attention. He's an Anatolian Shepherd, and he is a moose, but he's a big baby and loves attention. Look at this. In week two, I did an 11 minute house. segment on the Anatolian That's Sheepdog. The Anatolian Shepherd. Aren't you Oscar? Who's a good boy? Absolutely delightful visiting my buddy and his family, especially seeing these two little girls who are adorable. Uh, they actually call me Craig Bear because when his oldest was little, I got her a stuffed bear that she promptly named Craig Bear. And eventually, that name was transferred not only to the bear, but to me. So they all call me Craig Bear. Playing darts with my buddy and his oldest daughter in his basement. It's hilarious. She's an absolute ah, ringer. Um, also, listening to the classic Billy Bragg album, talking to the tax man about poetry, which I just wore out in high school, so it was amazing to listen to that. Sunday, September 30th, just hanging out, drinking some coffee. Got the dog at my feet, wearing my pint-sized punk, the 10-year-old out of the UK that's got his own music fanzine. Um, but one of the things that I did yesterday with my buddy TJ is he actually broke out a bunch of shirts from the annual pig roast that I used to throw called Macapalooza. Did it for nine years. It was a blast. Ran its course and actually thought about bringing it back this summer because I turned 50. But, uh, but it was a trip. The way it worked is I, I'm more the execution guy. My buddy TJ is much more creative than I am. So he offered to do the t-shirts for it, do the design. He worked with t-shirt companies on a regular basis anyway. And so he worked with the printers to get them done. So he broke out all the t-shirts and walked through year by year what the thought process was, the designs that he came up with. Some of the stuff I didn't even know even after all these years. Uh, was missing one shirt that I actually found here at home that I think I did. He must have missed that year. Neither one of us can really remember. It's, it's kind of a while ago, and 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 it's, those parties were pretty intense. So, but enjoy taking a taking a walk through this kind of a behind the scenes of Macapalooza. I'm rocking the suburbs, just like Michael Jackson did. Um, this was a pretty basic shirt that we did. This was 2003. That's the original one, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think this was just a straight ahead OG. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, because I think, did I do this one? I think I did. Yeah, you might have done that one. Yeah. Just a straight ahead. It looks very Spartan. Hey, like, I got to do this. I got to check this off my list, and I'm going to just make a Craig Macapalooza t shirt. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Which is a very me thing to do versus. Right. As much, as the, like, much as the much more the execute guy than the creative guy <laughs> in the process. But I do like, I think I was clever with the come put the owl and Lou owl at least. That's a good one. Yeah, so this was the original one, and this actually, this pig logo stuck through the rest of the Macapaloozas. And we used that for hats, and yeah. that was like the, yeah, that became the polo logo of Macapalooza. This is my favorite shirt. Yeah, this is my favorite too. So this is the DC Comics logo. So the second one, he tilted it, put the DC Comics logo in there. Roman numeral year, the date, and then the back is just such a classic. So what we wanted was sort of a wanted poster type of thing, but also like an old fashioned gig poster announcement. So I, I love that quote. Yeah. One man's quest for fun becomes your Saturday afternoon of bliss. More than just a barbecue, more than just a band of the burbs. Macapalooza, yeah, this is probably this. Just gonna so sit this, here and hang on for dear life. The fun will freak you out. Yeah, this is, I think this is my favorite. So this, you know, has all the elements of like, uh, it's got, you know, Quest for Fun is from uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Tell you something, this is no longer a vacation. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. I'm going to have fun and you're going to have fun. We're all going to have so much fucking fun when we'll need plastic surgery to remove our goddamn smiles. You'll be whistling symphony doodah out of your assholes. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm always a big fan of alliteration, so barbecue band and the burbs. Uh, clearly a um, homage to... Um, Yellow Cool J. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, just a kind of a nod to the fact that a lot of us, a lot of people that were at the party have kids. And then uh, this is sort of a little bit of a, of, a, of, of a precursor to the hold steadies, you know, take the day off, take the next day off. 
So, um, and then I don't know where I got the funnel will freak you out. So, uh, this is the Walmart logo. So, uh, there was a, oh, the, the, this is Macaluza 3 because the registered trademark is a Roman numeral 3, which is pretty never subtle. I noticed that. Pretty subtle. 17 years later, and I never noticed it. And then this is um, Craig's a greeter with a gold suit. This, this icon has been used many times, the greeter with the pins. This is a Nirvana um, smiley face. This is the wife of Ricky Bobby from uh, Talladega Nights. And then uh, all the Walmart type of logos, uh, Party Center. I said the gray one was my favorite, but I I think this one, this one is, uh, this is this is only for those of you that sort of have a sick sense of humor. So um, so we took the, the icon. So I guess three shirts at this point have had it. So this is Macapalooza 4. Back when I had hair. And IV being the quintessential Roman numeral for four, but also intervenous. And so I had, a, I took away the, whatever Craig was holding in the original one. And I had him make an IV of alcohol going into his veins. So this is um, a little bit of an homage to the Blues Brothers. With John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd with the Blues Brothers. So that was the, the back of this. And then this was just straight ahead I took this from a um, gig poster, so it was a uh, the back of a of a of an old-fashioned snail mail postage. So, what it was, who it was going to, where it was happening, which all fit into giving you the things that were for the party. The the postmark is for where it is again, the date, and then I had them put their. I used to work with a company called Graftex in Utica, or Ithaca, I think it was. Uh, there's the logo. That was another pig logo I found. That yeah. Was really cool. Smoking a cigar. And then uh, the return address has Jim the Pig Guy, Jonathan Newell Band, Jeff Strange, and of course the people that make the party. So, so this is the this is the M from MTV without the T because it was Mac Plus of five. It was the fifth installment, 2007. Basically, this is always going to be relatively the same. Jim the Pig Guy, Jonathan Newell. Band. Number six. So we got the six ball. Suburban Chaos was a little bit of a, a, you know, sort of editorial that I threw in there. And then this haps, happens to be like a Utica a classic, like uh, either Utica, Miller. I think Miller, was, yeah. yeah. So this is uh, sort of a, a calm homage to um, to the beer. Um, again, Jonathan Newell Band, Penkowski, and then Jim the Pig Guy. So that's a pretty calm one. No... Uh, Nobody was hurt in the making of that shirt, so. I would say that Macapalooza 6 was the one that was either over-purchased in terms of shirts or under-attended. Mm -hmm. um, either way, we have extras, so there's four outside of the original that are in here, so. Where, where'd that hat go? Let's look at the hat, too. Yeah. So yes. this is... Uh, I forget which year we did the hat. This is a good hat. This, this is the... Yeah. The game was the thing that was happening back in the day. That was the hat that everybody wanted. Yeah, but this was, especially what I liked about this, I think I did this on, um, I forget the website that you could do all this stuff, customink.com is I right. think where I did that. And it was nice because, because it had the front and the back. So the hat is probably the most scarce of the Macapalooza gear. Originally I was thinking, cause TJ and I couldn't find a seven shirt and I, I couldn't remember it. And finally somebody posted on, on Facebook, my sister did and said, wait a second, I have a blue one based on a movie. And then I remembered it's the seven design is based off the uh, movie with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman seven. So that's where the front comes from the logo. Uh, and then the back, you've got the top seven moments in Macapalooza history to date. Um, along with Macapalooza 7, listing the uh, the usual suspects of Tommy Penkowski and guests, Jim the Pig Guy, and then the uh, the date and information. And then um, down at the bottom, rocking the burbs in this seven-year itch. Uh, but if you go through the uh, the seven items here to date, number seven, the shiny gold suit. Um, why is Mac wearing a gold jacket? Where that comes from, one of the parties um, had somebody from work show up, a young kid right out of college, used to see him in a, in a, in a work mode, professional atmosphere um 
sees me wearing a shiny gold jacket with Elvis sunglasses and is like, um, why is Mac wearing a shiny gold jacket? Um, number six, head on a shed. The pig's head basking in the July heat. Um, that was the very first year and pretty much every year afterwards when I had him do it, I wanted it to be kind of a Lord of the Flies type thing. So I actually asked the pig guys, Dickie Betts is the guy that did it and Jim, the pig guy worked for him. I'm like, yeah, could you, yeah, I want this big of a pig. This is the time. And oh yeah, could you bring the severed head? So we actually set it up on top of the shed in my backyard and it was hot as hell. All the kids were coming back to look at it. My neighbor's father was bringing the little ones. God, they're now uh, you know, in college and just graduated, going to look at the freaking severed head. So that was pretty fun. Number five, Jim the Pig Guy, always a classic. Had a guy come every year, and it was the same guy every year, Jim the Pig Guy. Great guy, took good care um, of us. Number four, the back of the van band, Jonathan Newell band, you know, playing in the rain. One year we had set it up and it just, I, I set up tents and stuff like that. They had set up and it just poured. And they're like, yeah, Craig, we can't do this. So uh, they pack it up and they brought a big uh, big van down. So finally Jonathan's like, fuck it, this is Macapalooza. We're going to make this work. So they emptied out the van, backed it up under the tent and played out of the back of the van. And that's the back of the van band is, is still gets mentioned today. How we didn't end up electrocuting anybody or damaging any of his equipment God only knows. Right, number three, ARG. Max roving ARG shots of beam complete with eye patch. So I'd carry around a handle of bourbon and randomly say, you got to do an ARG shot. So toss it back, say ARG like a pirate, and you'd get an eye patch. Um, number two, drunk hot women. Does it need further explanation? We're leaving it alone. And number one, I know we're not monogamous, but Mac getting in trouble with a fair sex. We're not going to elaborate on that. But... Anyway, we found the number seven shirt. So the one shirt that TJ didn't have, and I think it might have been because he didn't attend, I, we neither one of us can really remember. It's been a while, uh, but was number eight. And uh, that was just the eight ball theme, uh, calling it the Ocho. You know, I think um, Dodgeball, the movie, would come out about that time. So pretty basic design. That may have been one that I did myself on Custom Ink again. Maybe TJ wasn't there. But at least uh, now we've got a complete This was set. the ninth one. And of course... This was the last one. Yeah, Route 9, 2011. Obviously, local New York State uh, relevance there. And then... Uh, so, we went with a different colored shirt. Took the... Uh, Jim the Pig Guy didn't make this one. I don't know if we didn't do the Pig Guy. I can't remember, honestly. Established in 2003. And then, yeah, this must have been the... 11th install or ninth, the ninth year so this was yeah this was the last one i did because i didn't make it to 10. yeah so this is kind of the farewell tour sure hopefully you got a kick out of that and a bit of a walk down memory lane for those of you who actually attended maybe i'll bring it back next year since i couldn't do it for my 50th birthday this summer so monday september 28th um all in the news today actually a few different things um, one, uh, the New York Times got a hold of 10 years worth of President Trump's tax returns that he's been fighting to, to, to keep out of the press and keep from being released. Um, I can see why. It basically is not a pretty picture. It shows that he's lost a ton of money, has barely paid taxes, uh, federal taxes in the past 10 years. And I think, um, I don't think they reported the first two years he was in office, but in 2016, he only paid like $750 worth of taxes. So... Not very flattering, and uh, one of the things that actually they pointed out is that he wrote off $70,000 for haircuts and hairstyling, which, really? So what's kind of funny is I actually put a tweet out there uh, to the Royal Coffee Group and just said, hey, do you think I can get away with a you know, 70K write-off for haircuts? Um, and what was interesting, Brian Koppel then immediately retweeted it, and then it got kind of went viral, at least on the scale of what my tweets do normally, like two people look at mine. Um, and one of the interesting things, it's Essie Hinton, the writer of the, the book The Outsiders, who got turned into a movie, retweeted it. So I was like, ooh, that's kind of cool. Trump has also put forth his nomination to backfill Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, who passed away on the Supreme Court. It's a, a Notre Dame grad by the name of Amy Conan Barrett, who is a disciple of conservative um, Supreme Court Justice who passed away, Anthony Scalia. So, uh, really trying to jam this through. It's very unpopular, but he wants to get her on the court. He's even said so. 
because he's fearing that his um, that the election is going to end up in the Supreme Court. And he wants to make sure he's got a judge in there that will support him. Um, very, um, very disconcerting. He certainly seems qualified. She's very high, high marks, but she's just very, she's kind of the exact opposite of Ruth Bader Ginsburg as far as her views. Uh, very conservative. And that this is, I mean, Trump's going to put three freaking justices on the Supreme Court. It's going to be decades of um, influence on what happens in the country. And and I'm so sick of the Senate. I was looking at the um, looking at the way the Senate set up. And hey, I get it. The way it was set up is the, the House of Representatives represents um, states by their populace. And then the Senate is represented. You get two per state, regardless of the population. I live in the uh, uh, capital region of New York, or in and around Albany. We've got about 1.2 million people. There's six states that have less people than that. I actually went through and looked at the five least populous states. Of the 10 senators um, that are there, nine are Republicans. And of those five states, all of them have fewer people than are just here in the capital region. Um, I, I did the math, and I think it was uh, Wyoming I looked at. And I, a voter in Wyoming for the Senate has 33 times the power than I have as a New York voter, simply because uh, New York's got 33 times the uh, the population. It's only like 600,000. You know, I, I get that it's supposed to the checks and balances between so you don't have a, uh, you know, have the majority imposing rule over the minority. But Jesus Christ, between that and the the electoral college is is just ridiculous. I don't know why we have it. I'm a fan of Alexander Hamilton, but that's one he got wrong. It's reading a BBC article where they were talking about and try to explain to their their readership to the Europeans. They're like, what is the electoral college and why doesn't the popular vote actually elect the president? Um, yeah, the country's just falling apart. Uh, it's Tuesday, September 29th. So three things going on in my world of varying importance today. Um, first, and probably most important to the world at least, is you've got the presidential debate, the first one between Trump and Biden, taking place at 9 o'clock tonight in Cleveland. Um, secondly, and what I'll be doing is also in Cleveland, you have the start of the playoffs for the Yankees going against the Indians on the road. So Cole versus Bieber should be a hell of a game. Uh, Yankees have been inconsistent as hell. We'll see how far they go, but I'll be rooting for them. Wearing my shirt, got my Yankees watch on, got my hat over here. I'm a Yankee fan. Third, speaking of fandom, um, Battleground, Jim Butcher's book 17 of the Dresden Files that I've talked about and uh, the next book after I just read, Peace Talks, came out today. I've already listened to a little bit of it on Audible, but you know, between work and the Yankee game and stuff like that, it's probably going to take me a little while to chew through it. So that's the three big things going on in my world. Wednesday, September 30th. So uh, last night was the first presidential debate between Trump and Biden, and I decided not to watch it. I already know who I'm voting for, and I knew Trump's annex would just drive me crazy. Uh, so I watched the Yankee game instead, which I am glad I did. The Yankees won 12-3. to um, Garrett Cole had a phenomenal start, seven innings, 13 uh, strikeouts, and a bunch of home runs by the Yankees. So let's hope they close out this three-game series and win tonight. Uh, but the debate was just a debacle and an embarrassment for the country. Trump acted like Trump does and um, just kept in, you know, interrupting, wouldn't follow any of the rules of the decorum uh, of the debate itself. Um, and some, you know, he kept trying to, to rattle Biden. Biden kept his cool for the most part and then at some point just told him to shut up, which I think is classic. Um, Trump, the other big news is uh, Trump refused to um, condemn white supremacist movements. Uh, when specifically asked about the Proud Boys, which is a, a far-right uh, supremacist movement, uh, he said he refused to condemn them and just said, Proud Boys, stand, stand, by, stand down and stand by, which they've now taken as like, uh, you know, they're making patches about it and stuff like that. Just absolutely appalling. God, I hope we vote this clown out. October 1st, um, Thursday, 1.15 in the morning. Holy cow, just stayed up watching the Yankee game. They ended up, uh, they were down 4 nothing. They came back. They uh, Gio Urshela hit a grand slam to take them ahead, 5-4. to four. They ended up taking the lead, gave up the lead, took the lead again, gave up the lead again, and then finally in the eighth, scored two runs to go up 10-9. And then uh, in the bottom of the ninth, 
Um, you had um, Chapman, the closer, come in, struck out two guys, and then struck out the third guy, but it got past uh, uh, Sanchez, so the guy reaches on first base. So you're like, shit, should have been the end of the game. And then luckily he struck out the last guy too, so the Yankees won, uh, took two out of the uh, – you know, won two games, and it's a three-game series, so they advanced to the division series. I'm going to be a zombie. Here's the part where I talk about music. All right, so just on my way back, just got back in, back back home. I'm not home-home, but I stopped by Albany Distilling Company. Had to swap out a glass that I picked up on Thursday. And for some reason, this logo didn't get on up all the way, so I swapped it out for one that actually has it on there. But figured, come, grab a drink, got a nice malt whiskey and ginger ale and uh, go through and, and share what I got for Record Store Day. So overall for Record Store Day, I'd wanted five albums. There's one from Mike Watt, which is a, a single, it's a squeeze cover. Uh, the Alarms got some live recordings from 1988. Um, the Squirrel Nuts of Ramones is this a two LP set that they've got a prime thing I'm looking for. There is dual LP, has a bunch of different artists covering Wilco songs called Wilco Covered. So, unfortunately, I only got one. So, this Wilco covered, um, which I'm didn't, glad I got. And actually, what's amazing is I uh, po posted on Instagram a picture of it with my buddy TJ's daughter and uh, put it out there. And Wilco picked it up and actually reposted it. So, that's kind of neat that it's on their story. Um, but of the other four, two, they, the record store didn't even get. And the other two, they got limited copies. And they use a numbering system like you're at the deli. Me and my buddy had tickets number 51 and 52. So by the time we got in there, the real limited ones, the Ramones and, uh, and I think Mike Watt were already gone. So, but when we did go in Friday night to pick up um, our tickets, I actually did, did some shopping and they had some good stuff. So Idols just came out with a new album, Ultramano. So pick that up. Um, an old album that is phenomenal, but I did not have on vinyl, um, Boy Genius, the collaboration of uh, Lucy Dacus, Julian Baker and Phoebe Bridgers. Phenomenal. It's kind of more of an EP than an album, but it's just great. So I picked that up. Another older one that I that I had seen this guy, his name is J.S. Andara, uh, down at XPN Fest in Philadelphia. I think last year or maybe two years ago. I've lost track with COVID and stuff. But he's a Kenyan artist that moved to Minneapolis. And uh, this is his album. Um, it's just a great voice. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to the, to the uh, to the video I took of him. He's, I guess he's rebranded himself. He doesn't go by JS on Dara anymore. He's just going by on Dara, which confused me when I tried to look him up on Spotify. <laughs> year it's funny i went up to montreal i think i've talked about this before for what i thought was a free show with, with a bunch of irish bands um turns out it was not a free show open to the public it was actually an industry event meant for like record execs and stuff like that so but they let me in anyway because i came up from albany they're like you drove two and a half hours for this so they let me in but but her name is uh, jealous of the birds that's what she goes under and this is her her uh, i don't know if it's her first album but it's her latest um Called Peninsula, so that's pick that up since that was there. <laughs>
Six stars on the ceiling, so I don't feel so smart. God, I wish I could call you. What the hell would I say? Hope you're feeling better. We should hang out someday. got a, a pre-owned one, used one in great shape for a classic album, um, Paul Simon's Graceland. Just an unbelievable album. So, you know, I ended up, you know, one for five as far as the actual targeted stuff for Record Store Day, but still ended up getting some real good vinyl, and I'll keep an eye out for the other stuff. You know, Mike Watts would be great, the Ramones would be great. You know, you get what you can, and at the end of the day, the experience was good. It's the first time I've done a record store day thing. They don't do it here in the Albany, New York region for some reason. The record stores don't participate, which I think is a shame. But more importantly, I get to catch up with my buddy, his wife, and his two little girls who are adorable. So. And it gives me an excuse to come hang out at Albany Distilling for a little while and have a, have a drink before I go home and go back to meet the master. Get from Amazon. All right, melatonin, fish oil, and creamer. Outstanding. Another Timex Snoopy watch. Let's get a closer look at this. Slide it out of the case here. Got a bunch of stuff that they're partnering with Timex. You can see the 70 year anniversary of Charles Schultz and Peanuts. Strip here coming along on the box. Kind of a nice box that they've made just for this. So let's take a look at this. So this is the um, Timex Standard X Peanut 70th Anniversary. Um, you've got this version here that you can see Snoopy and Charlie Brown doing the kind of the happy dance. And there's another version with uh, just Charlie Brown and Snoopy just walking in profile. Um, they're doing a whole series of peanut stuff. I think I, I previously, show, previously shown the Flying Ace one with a Timex Marlin Automatic. Uh, they've released another Marlin Automatic with Snoopy at a typewriter, and they've actually got a Q 38 millimeter quartz, um, kind of a Pepsi dial with just one with Snoopy, and they're coming out with a whole series of ones for the fall and the holidays uh, that I'll share some more stuff um, that have a, have a whole range of characters. But... Yeah, I saw this. I, I just kind of like adding to the collection I've got. I've got the Joe Cool one. I've got the Timex Marlin I just mentioned. And now this one, the Timex Standard. So take a look at this pretty basic design. 40 millimeter uh, silver tone um, casing. Uh, you've got the on the, the crown there, you've got the Timex logo. Black leather strap uh, with the standard that Timex seems to use, uh, this, uh, this same tannery out of Red Wing, Minnesota, which are nice straps. Uh, then you can see the, the 40th anniversary, uh, paper to platinum logo there for, uh, with, with George Schultz's signature. Um, yeah, they've even got the lug size on there. Water resistance, a 50 meter, I can't imagine doing, I'm going to be doing much with this, but yeah, I, I like the basic face with the yellow green Arabic numerals there. The little squares marching the uh, marking the hour signs, and then the hashtags for the minutes. Um, I'm wondering, I'll have to see if those numbers are luminescent or not. Um, about a hundred bucks for this. Um, add it to the collection. Right, not much as far as an unboxing for this. So I ordered this from Amazon. And all they did was actually take the freaking box and throw a shipping label on it. So, Sam, are you happy to get milk bones? Friday, October 2nd. What a crazy week. So late last night, news broke that um, presidential advisor Hope Hicks 
tested positive for coronavirus, and she'd been traveling with President Trump. Not long after, news broke that both President Trump and the First Lady had both tested positive for coronavirus. There's an element of, wow, karma's kind of funny like that for somebody who's been in denial about the seriousness of coronavirus, how it's over, etc. Boy, what's just as disconcerting, and first and foremost, you know, no matter what, I can't stand the guy. I do not wish him ill will like that. You know, I hope he recovers and, and certainly the first lady recovers. Um, but what's frightening is that he's... He has created an atmosphere in this country that there's so much distrust of, of information, et cetera, that there's a significant amount of people that are speculating that, yeah, we think this is a hoax, that Trump is just doing this to gain a sympathy vote or some type of ploy to win the election. And I don't know what's scarier is that there's people that believe that or the fact that it's really not that far out of the realm of possibility for something I think Trump would do. Um, either way, crazy times. Let's hope he's okay. Let's hope he gets voted out. And I hope all of you are safe and well.